Hello and welcome to Arsashim in the hangar. Today we will take a closer look inside the Elegoo Centauri Carbon. You will not see an unboxing in this video with a lot of experience with printers. You see I do bigger and more complex print jobs as well. be collecting information about this product because it's appealing in its price range it's only like $300 it's an enclosed printer and it get, gets good reviews is it too cheap will it have downfalls you came to the right channel because my channel is about honest opinions my own opinion and not the ones of the salespersons Geek Buying sent me this for as a review sample and I use affiliate links so take this with a grain of salt I don't need to sell these it's a nice bonus, but I don't have to. I will tell you if this is shit. Yeah, to make it short, I didn't find a lot of negative points, although I tried hard. I used this for two weeks now, printed all sorts of things, decorative objects, technical prints, and it didn't fail once. So that's just the best sign. The setup process is easy. Manual, and you get a few accessories like a script blade, silicon, grease, USB stick tools, glue. Connecting the Wi-Fi was really Easy and it already reboots after like two minutes. Quick and easy over the air update. I like that you see the IP address right away here. Time lapse. Let's just see if this print works. The screen is quite responsive. Can turn on the LED. The LED is a bit flickery. And as expected, these printers work out of the box. Kind of like their user interface. Percentages being updated in real time. Layer lines remaining time and the core values. Time lapse is running as well, so it's a nice work. Good job. It's not a silent printer. The standard web interface is more than sufficient. I like the image quality of the webcam. I've seen a mod where you can place the spool inside the printer if you need the filament to be heated. Doesn't have to hide from the other printers in terms of design and looks. You don't need to tinker around with this. So often I hear from for my friends that buy into Bamboo Lab stuff. Just get a Bamboo Lab, it's like an iPhone, it just works, you don't have to take care of anything. I see this $300 printer, which rivals a $1,200 Bamboo, many aspects. And it also, it works out of the box. Wi-Fi setup is easy. Communication with Orca Slicer works without any firmware tinkering. The profiles that are in Orca, even those work really nice with the gen generic PLA, generic PETG. So really easy. You don't need to know much about printers to get good results out of this machine. And that's something that you don't get with Bamboos. You have a quite open machine. So you can use Orca Slicer, which I like to. I have many different printers and I don't want to use any cubic slicer for the any cubic, Creality Print for the Creality Printer, Elegu Slicer and another one. I want to use one slicer. I convinced them to use my Orca Slicer. Any cubic Cobra, for example, you need to make a little firmware hack. So it talks with Orca Slicer, but this one talks with it out of the box. I said it's open. They are a bit cheesy about the software that is inside the printer. They use Clipper, a very old version, because this is limited hardware. That's one of the downfalls. It's a cheap printer, it's limited processing power in it. So it uses a five-year-old version of Clipper, licensed under GPL, and they don't name <laughs> Clipper. They lied about it, that's one negative. You're not forced to enable a cloud account to monitor your prints. But you also, you, you cannot monitor your print from outside of your LAN over the phone. You need something like a remote access to a computer at home. It's, it's pluses and minus. To make it really short, I have a lot of sample prints that I can show you now. Didn't really fail once on me. That's, that's the best sign ever. It is fast, decent enough quality. I want to point one thing out, especially the filament loading process is really easy. You just go into extruder and you can load and unload. You just set up the temp a bit higher or a bit lower according to the filament. And since this is prepared to be a multicolor printer, because everybody needs multicolor, it has a filament cutter. It cuts, checks it out, checks in the new filament and you're good to go. And this worked for me, changing from PLA to PETG to 2PU back to PLA, PLA carbon with particles in it. 
I didn't have one nozzle clock. I even made quite large prints like this poop tray here, which uh, it just stands behind the printer. The bed is heating up really fast, so it doesn't take too long until the printer can start. Of course, the nozzle is fast at heating up as well. This is a little bit of a torture print because this is PLA carbon and quite large and really tall and five hours. Carbon. We see a little bit of string, but it's the carbon PLA. Extreme top light. You see the vertical lines. They are not terrible, but it's also not totally clean. But it's also on this filament you see vertical imperfections quite well. That's probably the worst case. But for a function part it's totally okay. First layer quality. A little bit of rippling here. All in all, very well done. And once again it was very reliable. So this is where the part is mounted and it should be enough to collect the poop that's coming out there. Also for being a $300 thing, the materials are quite, quite nice. I mean the top lid is glass. This thing here is glass. The door opens nicely, has a magnetic lid. The display, it's not the most responsive, but it's responsive and good enough for me. I can do what I want to do with it. The interface is nice and well designed. The USB port is in front. You get this little USB stick with it. Side doors are metal, back panel as well. And one of the first printers that standard with a side spool mount. No more printing out a modification to have the spool mounted in the side rather than rear. This is default there. And it's nicely reachable for me. Here we have a precise model of this little Buddha statue. It worked great. It has a slight defect on the nose. Benchy. It's a fast 15 minute Benchy and for such it looks really good. So the FTM printer test. It's a stress test. Of course we see stringing up there. And this is with the default print setting. So no tinkering whatsoever with it. Just everything defaulting out of Orca, not even of their Elego slicer. Bridges are a bit sloppy there. Overhang is fine. Overhang on the tower, which is especially difficult, is good. Yeah, there's some ringing artifacts on the tower here. But overall the quality looks pretty decent. Cylinders, yeah, all of the cylinders pop out easily. Not sure if I ever had this. One of these tests that even the 0.2 pops out so nice and easy. The one with the broken spikes here is the Anycubic Cobra S1. If we compare the edges, this looks way cleaner. Here you see the overhangs, are really a stress test. This one is better. And also the other overhangs. Maybe it's just because it's a nicely dried brand new filament. Well, the settings are just great. The PET3 came out really shiny. That's a IKEA packboard container thingy, which needed some support in the back here for the hooks. But it, yeah, and it was a long print, five hours print. But I like the quality. how this flexi astronaut turned out. Flawless, but the astronaut has one issue. Actually, he had a crack in his shield. <laughs> it has a lot of fine features, no issues and all the, all the joints are really well onto the scene with the visor. how this heart-shaped ways, link in the description of course, turned out. I tried to give it the harshest light conditions to show possible errors. And of course with these multicolor filaments everything looks good. <laughs> so yes, after these first test prints I use my 
Trinity Carbon PLA. This is pretty easy to print, it's just like normal PLA. You just need to make sure that you have a hardened muscle, or else the additional particles will break your muscle. It will wear it much. And this will be the Eiffel Tower in carbon optics. Two hours later. Of course, there is some stringing attached. Okay, the details look good. There's a lot of retraction hell in there, and of course, it gets stringing. And voila, it looks that much better without all those strings and some proper lightning. What do you think? Might be the coolest looking. Eiffel Tower that I've printed. Okay, it's the first Eiffel Tower, I admit. So finally I replaced this prototype PLA, heavy PLA block. I had to warm it up a bit to get it loose even. And I replaced it by the new part. And this new part has an even better fit. It's PETG, so it should be a bit more resistant to warm temps. It is glossy black, which fits better to the bike. It has two GoPro mounts. And it also has this slidey part, which, yes, it works as well, it works really nice. It has a little bit of play, but it doesn't do anything, it works really nice. I can adjust this for you, just let me know in the comments. I just love how this fits on this bike. Useful appliance for my car, just connects to the bottom of the passenger seat and is a bottle holder. If you have a really old A-Class Mercedes, <laughs> you can download this STL file. And you've seen these ugly things from the nice ABS print. Now they are gone. That's how good the first layer adhesion is. The support part here broke off really nice. And that's the, the underside which is connected to the support part. I love it. This is a prime example of why I love a larger build plate, the 256. Because in my application now I print a riser for my NAS and it happens to be a dimension of 24 by 22 centimeters, which perfectly fits on this build plate. It would not fit on a 22 centimeter build plate. And this should be the standard size 256. I hardly need the 30 by 30 of the Creole did, or even like 34 by 34, the really large ones. So it's a good middle ground. And now I'm excited for this four hours Pet G print. Yeah, and I really love to use Pet G now. I think on my older prints I stuck with PLA because it is the easiest, but Pet G is almost as easy to print with the newer printers. And it's way better in terms of stability, temperature, flexibility, and everything. It was a 349 print, confirmed, and look at that, it's a huge PETG riser, and I love it, let that cool down for a bit. This is the part that I designed this morning, and this is where the 3D printing hobby and things like computer stuff really work together nicely. We're solving issues that we didn't have before we used computers, so this M2 NVMe drive bay with four drives, it broke or something on the main board here broke. This will be the thing for another video. So I came up with the solution to get controller board. But you see now I have the problem, this is only for half height PCIe cards and I designed this riser. And the top lid will be placed on top here and it's really nice. Check this metal shininess on the pad G. And it will also be safe up to roughly 100 degrees of Celsius. Don't want to use PLA for this, I suppose. And it's so satisfying when it just fits. <laughs> I love it. Okay, it looks like it has a little bit of warping. The aluminum top plate is solid. The edge is high, this is slightly up. But other than this, it's a very solid part. It fits perfect. And check this out. Yeah, it sits there really perfect. <laughs> okay, on with this project, on with the printer review. Sorry for this little off topic. Okay, this morning I printed 
one of those lens rings from the DJI Goggles 3, especially on the inside. It's a bit delicate. Bad side is not so nice. I constructed this in on shape once again. Then I used the smooth plate, which has a nicer finish. Here you see the comparison between the smooth and the rougher side. And another print for the Goggles 3 is this TPU. This is actually my first TPU print on the Allegoo. And filament loading was not an issue. The print was very nice, minimal stringing. So really good experience. And if you own the Goggles 3, I will list this part for printing. Use TPU. This can save your lenses in the sunlight. Yeah, I'm really blown away by its performance. I hardly found any ne negatives. To list a few, the time-lapse function, which would have been nice for my review, it worked in the beginning. I could copy them to the USB stick, but you cannot delete them here and it seems like it doesn't do any more time lapses. The printer is loud. If you print and, and work next to it, it's, it's a bit inconvenient. Build room is 256 tripled. It's not the largest, but for this price and money, it's a fully enclosed printer. Doesn't have an active heating. If you need a preheated build room, you just heat the print bed to 100 degrees and let it sit there for 15 minutes or so. Then it goes up to like 40 degrees Celsius. During a print with closed lid, it achieves around 34 degrees temperature inside. It has a nozzle capable of uh, up to 320 degrees. Complicated materials can be printed with it. The best thing I can say about this thing is it will have its fixed spot in my shelves. The space back there is quite limited. I have the Creality K1 Max, any cubic Cobra, and the free spot is for the Allegoo. It's more than sufficient for me and maybe for you as well. I hope by now you have enough information to know if you make a good decision. If you buy it, consider using my affiliate link. It gives me a little kickback on my channel, which I can use to buy filaments or whatnot. Let me know in the comments, what do you think about this printer? Thanks a lot for watching. See you in the next review, which might be a scooter review, who knows? <laughs> Thanks guys, you're awesome. See you in the next one, bye bye.